Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Testing Mini Bytes. I'm your friend Abhunur Saktivet, and this is part three of the APM 2.0 and Java Client 8.x series, right? So, in the previous videos, we have seen how we can install the APM setup, and then in the last video, we have seen how we can launch the app. But in this video, we're going to see how we can inspect the app using two different ways. One is the APM Inspector desktop app, and the other one is the APM Inspector web version. So I will cover both the ways, and I will tell you some of the intricacies involved in inspecting the apps. Again, we need to inspect the apps in order to find out what is the element properties, so that we can write a code, uh, so that Elini, so, uh, so the APM can find it using those properties, and we can operate on that. Right? Without wasting a lot of time, let me switch back to the uh, IntelliJ. So this is the basic code that we have written. So using the same code, we are going to construct the uh, JSON. So so W3C capabilities that uh, you know help us to inspect the app. So the first thing what you can do is basically downloading the APM uh, inspector. Um, you can uh, I have in the first video covered how where to download from this, but again you can always go back and then see APM inspector. Uh, so you can say APM inspector uh, download, and then you can get the link here. So you can download it based on your operating system. This is one way or the other way is using the inspector.apmpro.com. So which basically gives you the capability to inspect without installing any stuff, right? So if, you are, if your machine is not having a good memory or it is not fast enough, then I would highly recommend using this particular web version so that, you know, you can still continue to inspect the elements easily. Good. So the first thing is um, we need to construct the JSON, right? You can either type it all by yourself Let's say in your in your case, you won't have any of these, right? So what you can do is you can you know click on plus and then it gives you this, and then you can type all your capabilities here. Or the other way is you construct the JSON body, and then based on this JSON body, it, it basically changes this. For example, let me change this to uh A B C D one, two, three, whatever, and then let's click on save, and then it gets automatically updated here. So you can either prefer this or this, but I normally prefer JSON. So I can just copy paste from here and there. So the first thing is APM device name. Again, this is just a name that you can use for your Android inspection. So it can be any uh, random names, shouldn't be a problem. For the automation name, we are using UA Automator 2. For iOS, it should be XEUA test. And if you are using Espresso, you can also mention that. Uh, but again, the app, APM colon app, again guys from APM 2.0, you have to send W3C capabilities. Let's say, let's say you are not giving this APM call in, in the beginning. Okay, what happens? Okay, here there is a checkbox that says automatically add necessary APM mentor prefixes. So if it is checked while creating it, it automatically adds them. For example, let me just save it. Um, when you start the session, it will just get added automatically. Okay, so. So these are the three things. So I need to know which app that I want to launch. The app is here, um, which I covered in the later, uh, previous video, what kind of app it is. So we are using a Sauce Lab demo app and the platform name that we are trying to launch is Android. My Android device is also ready. So let's click on start session. But one thing that you need to keep in mind is when inspecting from APM Pro, okay? So let me, let me say APM, okay? And then if we start the server like this, so the, if I try to activate them, so the APM server is now up and running, but the problem will be when I click on start the session, it says, hey, I am trying to inspect you, but you need to enable one more stuff that is allow hyphen hyphen allow hyphen cost. So what you can do is basically you can, uh, you can basically terminate this, you can use the terminal or whatever. And then while starting it, you can mention APM hyphen hyphen allow hyphen cost. So this makes sure that you can inspect it from the web version of the APM inspector. So once you're done, you can press on enter. Now the APM server is started. This is APM 2.0 with the necessary plugins. Let me click on start session now. So if you notice, it, it automatically added the APM colon in, in front here as well, and you can see here as well. So let me open the device. So the device is loaded. We can also see, I can have the capability to inspect it now. So how do you inspect? You basically click on this, this element here, and then you can select this, whatever the element that you want, 
and you can inspect it from here. Maybe I, I'll zoom out a bit so, so we can see what's happening. So if you notice here, uh, this is the first thing. Uh, you know, you, you can when you when you click on something, it highlights that. So you know which one is what. Okay. So let's say you want to find out the first Sauce Labs backpack, whatever. Okay. So if you notice, there is a text that you can use to find it. Okay. So I am going to use this text, or you can also find XPath if you want. Or you can use this XPath. So once you are done, if you want to validate whether, let's say you are not using this XPath, and you are creating your own stuff. Okay, then you want to verify it. Then what you can do, you can click on the search for element, choose the strategy that you want to use, and then click place the selector and click on search. So if it is returning you this, then it, so you can see it is highlighting here. So then it is properly identifying the element during automation or so it will identify correctly. Okay, so you can also validate by clicking on tab. So I'm just trying to tap on it and it's also working. So if you want to navigate, you can navigate using your emulator. So you can go back. And then, so this doesn't get updated automatically. All you have to do is click on this refresh shows. You can, ref, you know, uh, refresh this. There are different things you can go back from here. Uh, you can go to the home screen like this. Um, there is also a lot of things that you could do with here. Like if you want to switch context and stuff like that, you can go here. Uh, you want to get all the context list. So there is only one app now that is native app context. In some hybrid apps, you will see web app, native app, and other stuff. So you want to switch between contacts you can switch contacts using this uh, there is a lot of action stuff that you can do um, there is also stuff like uh, you know uh, recording and uh, start recording and uh, you can just click on something it automatically writes the code for you so if you notice here uh, it writes me the code in java so if you want a different language you can also use them uh, so yeah basically that's all about how we can inspect it uh, the one important thing that we need to keep in mind in in apm is uh, text is an attribute here, not an um, method. In Selenium, it is a method, but here it is an attribute. So let's say if I want to construct this particular stuff, uh, XPath, then I have to use something like this. So this is, um, let's go here, android.widget.textView, okay? And then add the rate text. So you should use add the rate. In, in case of Selenium, we use text like this, right? So we don't want to use something like that. So we have to use like this, right? And then we can give backpack or whatever, and then you can use this. We don't need this index, all good. Let's click on search and you can also find it. So this is how you can write an X path. And if you want to save this, okay, then you can just copy this XML source or you can download this as an XML file. So you can do all those stuff, right? So this is how basically you can ins uh, inspect an app based on these properties. You can you know, write X paths, uh, you can use content description, whatever that you want to do, okay? So the similar stuff you can do with the APM inspector app. The only difference is it's a desktop app. And then while starting the APM server, you don't have to give hyphen hyphen allow hyphen cars. So that's the only difference, but, uh, but apart from that, everything remains the same. Let's say instead of this, what you want to do is you want to um, basically inspect Sauce Labs or some other cloud providers. So here, Whatever we have seen, we are inspecting the app that is sitting in our machine. But you can also inspect an app that is sitting on browser stack, Headspin, Perfecto, whatever, Lambda test, anything. So you can do any of that, okay? And, and most importantly, you can inspect both Android and iOS. So for example, in the same case, I can close the session and I can replay some of these things, okay? So this is, let's say iPhone 14, okay? And then this is XCUI test and uh, the app stuff, right? So let's go here and the app name is this. I want to inspect this app. So let's go and remove this stuff. Platform name is iOS and hopefully it should work. Let's see. If you notice, we are inspecting the iOS app now, okay? But I think it's it's opening the Android 8, okay? Um, there is some problem, okay? Let us let me close this again. And so if you notice, I didn't save it. So that's the problem. So let me save it. And now let me start the session. How did I find that it's still inspecting the Android one? It's because 
um, the the names of the tags are Android dot widget or something like that. So based on that, I found out it is inspecting the older one. So here you notice the type is XE UI element. So then you, you are sure this is uh, belonging to our iOS. Okay, this is not the best app that you would get in in terms of uh, you know the accessibility IDs and all that. So uh, you know in your case, your developer should be in a position to give you better attributes to find an element. Everything remains the same in iOS. Uh, maybe use labels and stuff like that. You can also use uh, iOS class chain, um, you know, stuff like that. So there are different uh, locator strategies. For example, you can use, uh, you know, all these things, okay? For iOS, it's class chain and predicate string that are very powerful. We will see that in the coming videos, so don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, see, this is how we can basically inspect that. So I'll see you guys in another great video. Until then, tada, bye-bye from Mudan. Bye.